Three things more to say. And I got ten minutes. Okay. Um, okay. I noticed uh, um, in one in one um, in one person's exercise that the the was that there was a little bit of uh, of confusion about punctuation with with respect to mathematics formulas. And the reason is is, is easy to understand because there are two rules. Uh, that are just the opposite of each other. If you're in the, in the middle of a paragraph, the punctuation belongs after the dollar sign. So you would say X, um, comma, outside the dollar sign, Y, dollar sign, comma, and um, Z. And then I might even say this is a psychologically bad break here. Um, but you see the punctuation is, and the period, these all go outside the dot. If I put them inside, then tech wouldn't know that they were commas, and it wouldn't have treated them quite nice, quite right for, for 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 the text. In fact, if I had left out these two dollar signs entirely, then I, then the X and Y would have come rather close together, um, and the final paragraph would look, you know, X, Y, and Z, uh, uh, and uh, the space after the comma would be just a thin space instead of your ordinary inner word space. Uh, so, so you want to, to get the right spacing. The general rule, almost always, keep the punctuation outside um, the, uh, the thing. But in displays, it's just the opposite. When you have double dollar sign, um, and there's and it ends with a period. You know, you have some formula um, equals z or something like that, and then it ends with a period. Then you definitely want the period inside the double dollar sign because you put it at, if you put it outside. You see what's going to happen? First of all, this, the formula will be centered, and you're going to get a period on the next line after the display. Okay? So rules for display tend to be the opposite. Similarly, for, line, for breaking up a, a, a formula in the middle of a paragraph, usually you'll say x plus y plus at the end of a line um, in, in, a, in, in the middle of a text, and then comes z plus w on the next line. Uh, would be acceptable if you had to make a break there. Uh, but in a displayed formula, typically it would it, uh, a line would end x plus y, and the next line would say plus z plus w. And, uh, and I noticed uh, we looking at one Polish journal where they put the plus sign in both places in the display <laughs> to please everybody, I guess. Um, in, but in a display, then there tend to be uh, uh, different rules for, from breaking things and, punctu and punctuating things and then in uh, than in text and, and punctuation. Uh, it's easy to remember, I think, that uh, that it, since this this isn't part of the formula in a text, then to keep it outside the dollar signs. Uh, but on the other hand, for a display, it's part of the thing being displayed, so you keep it inside the display. Next, uh, somebody said, what about L pile, C pile, and R pile? Emmanuel mentions these as sort of an afterthought, but it's kind of a useful uh, construction in uh, several places in mathematics. L pile of X... Um, uh, uh, can we have this on the screen, please? Uh, X carriage return, Y carriage return, Y Z carriage return, close bracket. This, the, the, if I type this, this means a left justified pile. So the letters X, Y, and Z are going to uh, occur above each other. Maybe you can't see that too well because they all look about the same width when I write them by hand. So suppose I had Y plus T. Then every, see, they would be, they would, they would come out. Um, uh, this, this L pile builds a box. That contains three, the, all the formulas, as many as you give, um, uh, put above, on top of each other uh, uh, at the left. Typical use of that would be uh, uh, if you if you're giving a formula like uh, absolute x equals uh, x e if, and then minus x if something like that, and then you could make these two things above each other by using an L pile, for, for example. You'd have to. Uh, You'd have to get the if in here. You'd have to go to H box to get out of a math mode. But that, but that's that's examples of, of L pile, or else sometimes you have to have a list of numbers, uh, 0.1, 0.01, 0 0.001. You'd like to have those above each other, left center. Similarly, there's C pile and R pile, center pile and right right justified pile for lining them up at the you know center them or, or or right justified. Don't forget the carriage return at the very at the after the last one. Or something strange might happen. Um, it might, if you're lucky, it would just say missing carriage return. But uh, sometimes, it, if it's complicated in here, then something. Uh, you know, it tries to say missing carriage return. But if you if you also 
leave off a bracket or something else. Anyway, this is just, don't forget that carriage return there. You're going to get some error message if you don't. So, so these, it fills the boxes, and then the final box is actually centered vertically with respect to everything else. So if you give several L piles in the same, same line, they'll all appear centered with respect to each other, uh, uh, adjusted like a three, a three line one and a four line one. Uh, the four line one will, will, will be half a line up higher than the three line one. Do these only work in math mode? That's in math mode, yeah. It's a, something like an equation of line, but without, uh, without uh, you know, it's just much simpler than an e equation of line. Now, um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, this is a very important one that uh, most people, um, yeah, I, I think that the basic format that, the, that uh, covers almost uh, everything that, that it, I mean, it covers most of the things that you need for most papers, except there's one thing that I, that I, that, that I should have put in basic format probably, and, uh, and I, I probably will eventually, um, is, is for ha when, you, when someone uh, wants to, to give a bunch of, uh, of lines um, uh, that say case one, case two, and case three, or something like that, and you want to list the cases. Um, now, I don't have an example. Well, I probably could find one in, in, um, in, in Thomas's book. Uh, just by just by uh, eyeballing a few pages until I get it. Well, so far I don't see one, so I'll just have to. Um, oh yeah, here's one. Okay, here's an example of the kind of a thing that people that that um, that, that that would occur. Here's you know Roman numeral one, two, and three, um, and and um, <clears throat> furthermore, if this had if this uh, Roman numeral one would have continued on to several other lines. Uh, it would have been nice to have the, the continuation lines all starting, um, all starting at the same at the same place. Uh, okay, so that's a rather common thing, um, and uh, and uh, uh, I should show you how to do it. Um, now, um, the, the the macro that's there's a macro in Appendix E called text indent, which which does this uh, uh, text indent. And uh, what I what I would typically what I would write in my own book uh, then uh, 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 if I were doing if I were doing it I would say text indent and then I would say one and then I would say then I would give the next that's the first part of the text divide by whatever whatever Thomas said you know and then and then um, I continue to the end of a paragraph and then after the end of a paragraph start another text indent. And this means an indentation, but the text takes the place of it. Okay, and 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 uh, and the rest of the paragraph uh, uh, will start out in the same uh, the same amount uh, amount over with. The next case was complete. So not, so so I, I had text indent of something, and that would and that would cause everything else to be moved out. Another kind of a thing that that often goes in the text indent is a uh, of course a number a new Roman numeral or else a, a, a big heavy dot which is called a bullet so you can say dollar sign it's a, it's a math symbol dollar sign bullet close dollar sign and that gives you a bulleted list of, of alternatives you know you say there are five way, five reasons why mine is the best and and you, you say dot this is it okay so so you get this indentation now now um, hanging indentation is 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 the, is, is something I, sh I I meant to say earlier today hang it suppose I say hang indent um, uh, 20 points. This would mean that every line after the first is going to, uh, uh, well, I suppose I say after, after three. This would mean that the first three lines of the paragraph get set the same as normal, but um, but the fourth and subsequent lines get moved 20 points over, and the line is is uh, is 20 points short or uh, narrower. Um, uh, similarly, I could say hanging in 20 points for three, and this would mean that the first three lines, uh, uh, the, the first three lines I said over there, and then and then it, it restarts. When I was doing that fancy S the other day, I would I I, I hang I had a hanging den on the second line, but it it, 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 it disappeared at the end. So well, now, to, to, in order to handle the text indent, hanging den is a basic feature. I mean, is a is a built-in feature of text. Text indent is not. It's a control sequence that's defined uh, and added to the format. Um, but it uses hanging indentation for the for the subsequent lines. So Correct. if you if um, uh, if uh, so, the actual coding for text indent is um, it, uh, well. I, this is a little bit beyond the scope of our course, but I would define text indent 
uh, to, uh, taking one parameter uh, in the following way. I would say, um, um, uh, let's suppose that my, I, I, I've already decided, however, exactly how, how much indentation is going to be used. Let's suppose it's 20 points. So then I'm going to say H box to 20 points. And this makes a box 20 points wide. And then it says H fill um, number one. This bo box is now 20 points wide. Effect. Instead of H fill, excuse me, I'm going to use HSS so that it can include a, it might even stick into the margin if you give it a long piece of text. But this will be 20 points wide. And, and this HSS means horizontal stretching or shrinking as needed. And, um, and, and then in comes the thing that you asked to, to be inserted into the text indent. Um, and then also, I would say, then I would say no indent. I'm sorry, before I do that, I have to say no indent because I have to get this out in the left margin. So I say no indent, and then I, then I give this. And then I say hang indent, 20 points. Uh, and, and that's the end of the tech, of definition of text indent, hang indent by 20 points. Now this means that second line and subsequent lines will be indented by 20 points. The first line was not indented at all, but I put a box in there that was 20 points wide. And in fact, I usually, um, I usually also put a space here, leave a space there also. Um, uh, that, otherwise, it'll, the, the things will, will, will butt up against each other and look horrible. So I should have left a space right there also after the, after the parameter number one. OK, so that's, that, that's a common thing that people usually need. In its, and when you're putting several things in, in series like that, it's typical to give about three points extra space above and below the list of things. Makes it look a little better. Now, oh, Appendix E of the tech manual is a is a uh, is an example of of an elaborate format that was used to actually typeset a complicated 700-page book. Um, uh, the book is uh, now in the bookstore. It's the volume two of um, of Art of Computer Programming. It was done essentially using all the control sequences defined in Appendix E. So for people who who um, uh, want to who who want to do uh, uh, you know, you run into a problem now and you say, how am I going to solve that? How could I do it? Um, and it wasn't covered in the course. It wasn't covered in basic in the manual. Well, one thing you could do is uh, go to the library, get a copy of this of this volume two that was done with tech, find a page where that problem occurred on it. Probably a good, good chance that, that, that it occurred somewhere in that book. And then go to the computer file, uh, for the tech file that generated the book, which is online at sale, and take a look at it. At, uh, at where it is, these uh, files, for example, uh, it's called v2, comma, dek, uh, v233, oh, 234.tex, v2, dek. This is for section 3.4 of the book. v2 stands for volume 2, and 3.4 stands for section 3.4. And you'll be able to find, uh, find corresponding uh, solutions to all kinds of problems that might arise if, if, in case. Uh, case they, they arrive. OK, I've covered everything on the list, except somebody had a few other questions, like how can you tilt a spiral text like this? I'm sorry, um, that's not um, allowed by most of our output printers. Um, and the other questions that this person asked uh, are really more appropriate for next week's Wizards course. Um, Got to say one word in conclusion. people. Uh, when they first are starting and learning, as you are this week, uh, they always uh, um, say, well, what about an interactive version of text so that as I'm typing in, it would immediately appear on the screen uh, in front of my eyes exactly how the formula is going to look. And this is uh, something that, uh, that, er that uh, everybody uh, desires very much, and, they, and the computer scientists who start to learn tech um, also put in the back of their mind that maybe that'll be their thesis or they're going to do that next year. They're, they're going to make that a project to create such a system. And then after two weeks of using tech, then they forget about it because they've, they've already internalized all uh, these, the, uh, you know, enough of the language that they, that they don't even care what it, they, they know what it's going to look like, and they just and they're interested in minimizing keyboard strokes, and they wouldn't even bother to look up if it were there. Um, and so, um, uh, and so, such interactive systems. Uh, uh, we started out with great plans to do one, and we still probably will uh, someday. But we never can find a student to do it because it, it, it never seems to be the the. the, the uh, um, uh, as, as important after after you learn the system as as in your first few, few minutes, and I've I've found this universal. I talk to people 
from uh, uh, who have used uh, many other uh, devices for computer in, uh, input to printing, and including mathematics, and they they all say the same thing that uh, after the learning phase is over, uh, after you've done your first uh, ten pages or something of output, then uh, um, you've internalized it to the point where you, where you don't care that much about this interactive system, but it'd still be very nice to have one to show the, the, the visitors who come and uh, the boss and so on uh, that you have this glorious thing that's sitting over here in the corner not being used. Uh, but they can play with it and see. The other nice use of an interactive system like that is, is uh, for the very final tuning of a book where somebody wants to uh, uh, change a paragraph in the middle and would like to know that the paragraph is still going to come out exactly the same number of lines or he's going to rewrite it so that it does. Um, and. Uh, and then would like to see interactively exactly what's going on there. So, so that's another uh, use for such a system. Uh, but it isn't as, but it isn't as, uh, but, but I, I believe you will find that as you get a little more experience with it, um, all of a sudden uh, you will know as you're typing it what it's going to look like afterward. Just have a few more tries before your, 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 the keyboard and, and the output. The fact that you're doing it indirect isn't going to, isn't going to bother you. Okay, I'm sorry I've run over time. Uh, happy checking to all of you.